You don't really know much about Halloween. Hello and welcome back to another unboxing video. I am your host Joel. I am one half of the Newly Deads and if you're like who are the Newly Deads, head to thenewlydeads.com and check it out. Um, we are artists and content creators. We uh, do um, events and things where we sell our artwork. Uh, there's a link on our website where you can check out where we're going to be and when we're going to be there if you'd like to come out and say hello. We also have a podcast that we do that is the audio version of our television show Dollar Store Drive-In in which we find films out in the wild, like at uh, Goodwill, Salvation Army, Dollar Tree, Dollar General, etc. We watch it, uh, sight unseen, and then talk about it on our show. It's a little half hour chat show, which is available through five different uh, or four different um, streaming services, which you can check out on uh, our website to get more information about that, or just reach out to us directly at contact at thenewlydeads.com. We also have a lot of other content that uh, YouTube-wise, including snack videos, more unboxing videos. Uh, I do unboxing for uh, toys that I get, as well as a lot of movies. And um, there's a lot of information about us as well. So please feel free to go check that out. And um, so for this, uh, there was the Halfway to Black Friday sale. I believe they were doing their, you know, last ditch effort to get subscribers. Maybe it was a subscriber sale. I can't remember now. Um, <clears throat> for Vinegar Syndrome. And they were trying to get people, you know, to sign up for the second half of the year. I, this is the first year I've been a subscriber. So you can check out each month when we get a subscriber box, I do an unboxing video. So if you want to look at those, they are a list of videos, wherever those are on the, the page here. Um, but this is the second half or the first half, depending on when I release these, of uh, every day they had a sale, had a different theme to it as far as what they were um, putting on sale. So this is uh, kind of the bulk of what I ended up picking up, which was more than I should have, but um, that's another story for another time. So let's go ahead and get into this. The first one we have is Buried Alive from 1989. This was directed by uh, Richard, I'm sorry, Gerard Kikoin, who did uh, Dragonard, which sounds interesting. Uh, this stars one Donald Pleasance from a little film called Halloween that you may have heard of. Um, so for the plot of this film, a new teacher at a facility for juvenile delinquent girls starts to suspect foul play when the girls begin to inexplicably disappear, disappear one by one. I can say inexplicably, but not disappear. Um, this was the final film of John Carradine. Uh, it was filmed in 1988. It was released two years after his death, which if you are an exploitation um, fanatic like myself, and you've seen a lot of kind of low budget movies from the 60s, 70s, 80s, uh, and um, no, you might not know who John Carradine is by name, but you would definitely know the face. Uh, and his son Robert or Robert Carradine, yeah, was also a uh, face you would probably recognize and a name, especially if you watch films in the eighties. So it's a little sad that that's his last film, but it's kind of the reason I wanted to pick it up because I'm a Carradine fan. Uh, next up, we have The Good Book from 1997. Looks like an oddity for sure. This was directed by Matthew. Giacinto, that's a fun name, who only did one other short film, and that's it. Um, this stars one Brian Campbell, who was in Woof, the TV series, not to be confused with Woof from The Office. Um, so in this one, a dark futuristic tale of society uh, doomed near future. So it sounds kind of like a, a sci-fi Black mirror -y kind of thing. If I remember correctly, this is a shot on video thing, um, which I love, shot on video. If you've familiar with this channel you've heard me talk about it a ton um so bob dorian who was the voice on the tape recorder in the original evil dead film uh, appears as the head of gvc the one world government in the film so a little fact there if you are an evil dead fan you may already know that but uh again another reason i i wanted to pick it up so this one i'm i'm very curious about I, the, the artwork itself doesn't lend itself much to something that you would normally see on my shelf. I mean, I do love sci-fi, but it's just kind of a, almost looks like an L. Ron Hubbard thing. 
but I'm curious to check that one out. Next up, we have The Black Crystal from 1991. Speaking of, uh, I think, shot on video. Uh, this was directed by Mike Conway, who did Terrarium and Exile. Stars Lily Brown, and that's uh, the... <clears throat> That's all. That's all I had. I don't know if that's the only one that was on the list, or, or, or what. But um, so this is about a young man who encounters a satanic cult. That's all it said. There was no trivia. It's an AGFA, which uh, American Genre Film Archives is notorious for releasing the obscurest of the obscure, and that's kind of why I love them. Sometimes it's just huge, giant duds that you just can barely get through, and sometimes they're gems in the rough that uh, you end up sharing with all of your friends who love oddities. And this one, I think, is probably going to be the ladder. Not the ladder like I'm crawling up, but the ladder like the later. You know what I mean. Um, <laughs> this one is one that I saw several times, and I just kept kicking it back. And eventually, I just kept hearing things about it more and more as time went on that got me curious. So this is The Iceman Cometh from 1989. Uh, this is directed by Clarence Falk, who did uh, Naked Killer and Thunder Cop. Uh, it stars Maggie Chung, who was in Happy Ghost 3, to name a few. Uh, so this movie is about a frozen Ming Dynasty royal guard and the equally frigid killer he's been tracking, um, who are both thought out in modern-day Hong Kong. So basically, you've got a fish-out-of-water sequence where you've got you know a, a killer and someone who's trying to stop them, who were you know way back in time started out chasing each other trying to catch one or kill the other they're frozen and then now they're dealing with you know all of a sudden being in the future so it um <clears throat> that that in and of itself seems interesting and that lends itself to a lot of crazy chases apparently um and i'm trying to get this out here but it is stuck so we've got two discs in here i'm trying to see just basically the plot and uh special features and then it also includes a booklet. Let's see. So we've got them on horseback, sword fighting each other. See what I mean? So you've got back in the day. And who doesn't love a good fish out of water? But then you also factor in the fact that uh, they've got modern technology, including, you know, guns and things like that. And apparently it's just it's a crazy action movie. And who doesn't love a good crazy action movie? I guess not everybody does, but I do. Um, and I, I, heard of it but i've never seen it so i'm these are all blind buys uh let's see beyond evil from 1980 uh so this was directed by herb freed who did graduation day and tomboy which i don't know why but i just had them come up in another thing i was doing uh this stars one john saxon who you may know from uh, nightmare on elm street and enter the dragon martial artist super like interesting guy he was um uh the Langenkamp's father on the Nightmare on Elm Street series. Uh, this is about an architect who uh, he and his wife move into a colonial mansion where a demonic presence of the original owner's wife takes residence. So that's you know, like that devil baby guy there. Whatever that is. Looks like a devil baby. I don't know what it is. Interesting to say the least. Um, so I did find a little bit of trivia here. Let's see. Herb Freed got along so well with Linda Day George. He cast her as uh, basically they got married. The wording on that is weird. Um, wait. Director Herb Freeb got along so well with Linda Day George. Oh, he cast her husband, Christopher George, in his next film, Graduation Day. Sorry. I messed that up. Not them. So. Um, next we have <clears throat> Secta Sinestra from 1982. Uh, this was directed by Ignacio F. Aquino, who did uh, Can You Be With Five Girls at Once? I mean, I guess you could, but it's very a lot. Um, this stars Emma Keir, who did lots of stuff that I have to learn about, apparently. Uh, this is about a young woman who is pregnant with the Antichrist and is terrorized by a cult of Satanists. Sounds vaguely like uh, like a Rosemary's Baby situation, but um, it just, you know, seemed like something that... Uh, should have a, a, a second life. And I guess that's, you know, of course, the whole reason Vinegar Syndrome exists. Uh, then we have Deadline. This one's been on my list for a while. This is from 1980. I was so excited to finally pick this up. Uh, this is directed by Mario as a party who did Aladdin and the Death Lamp. Uh, you, you'll, if you're a Vinegar Syndrome, you, you already know about that one. 
Uh, this stars Stephen Young, who is in Soylent Green and Patton, two kind of classics of you know, American cinema. Uh, this is a, about a popular horror writer whose family is left falling apart uh, as he struggles to write his next horror movie. Um, <clears throat> This was shot in 1979, but not released until five years after it was made, uh, which is a long time. You see that those kind of coincide with each other there. Um, yeah, I don't remember why this one off the top of my head was on my list for so long, but it, it's been one that I've been wanting to, to see. Uh, I've got two left here. Perfect Strangers from 1984, not Valky Bartokamos, but uh, the, the film. Uh, this was directed by Larry Cohen who uh, has become a favorite of mine. He did It's the it's a live franchise, Maniac Cop, Cue the Winged Serpent, uh, The Stuff. He's done a lot of, a lot of stuff. Uh, um, but uh, <clears throat> this one stars Annie Carlisle, or Anne Carlisle, who was in Crocodile Dundee, Desperately Seeking Susan. And it's about a hitman uh, who tries to seduce the mother of a child who witnessed uh, his most recent kill. Uh, I guess that one's okay. Looks a little, little iffy there. So at a horror convention in 2024, in July, actor Stephen Lack revealed that director Larry Cohen put him in a box while filming, box, um, stating that no other cast or crew members were allowed to interact with him on set. Not an uncommon tactic to kind of create some actual uh, distrust, tension, you know, feeling of kind of uncomfort with, with uh, people that are in the film. But, uh, you know, if you're not expecting it or whatever, it could be a little off-putting. Finally, we have Cthulhu Mansion from 1992. Uh, this was directed by uh, Juan Piquier Simon, who did The Rift, and Saturn's Blood. Again, if you're familiar with uh, Vinegar Syndrome, you may have already heard of those. Uh, the star is Frank Finlay, who is in Life Force, which is the kind of an exploitation classic. Uh, this is about a group of drug-dealing petty criminals who are fleeing from the police, um, who take a magician and his daughter hostage, but uh, once they reach their mansion, all hell breaks loose, which sounds like a darn good time, like a good Friday night. Uh, this film was shot in six weeks, and we'll find out if that means it's a good thing or a bad thing. Vinegar Syndrome, uh, you're gonna cause me to get a second, third, fourth, fifth mortgage. Um, anyway, that's it, we're done. Uh, if you would like to check out all the other unboxing videos. Uh, they are released typically on Tuesdays. Just uh, click on the links wherever they are on the page and you can find them. They're all uh, lumped together in an unboxing category. But um, hopefully you have enjoyed yourself and don't forget that tomorrow is not guaranteed. So unbox your heart. See you soon. Halloween, the festival of Sauron. Happy Halloween.